Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. So today I wanted to share with you four things that you can do to um, manage the water in your garden with or without an irrigation system. The very first thing that you can do is get a soil test. Um, the reason that you want to get a soil test is because you want to find out what your soil uh, content is and what the water holding capacity of that soil is. Um, the reason that you want to do this is sandy soils and things, they're going to drain more. Um, you're going to need more water for those types of soils. And if you have more of a clay soil, that's going to hold a lot more water. Um, you're going to need to water that less. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is get that uh, get that soil test. To get a soil test, you want to talk to your local extension agent and get a soil testing kit. So if you have more of a native soil, then that's going to be one type of soil test. And if you have a heavily amended soil, that's going to be another type of soil test. So if you have a heavily amended soil, make sure that you talk with the extension agent about the particular test that you need for that, um, because that will be a different one if you send in the wrong one. Um, it's going to come back to you and it's just going to extend the length of time that it takes for you to get that back. So um, get a soil test. So make sure to check out our um, five watering mistakes in the garden. Um, that video can be seen either there or there. I'm not sure yet. I haven't quite worked this out. Um, <laughs> but check out that video. Um, that being said, um, it talks about the best times of day to water. If your plant is wilting, they're really... Um, it doesn't matter what time of day that you water. If you've got a wilting plant, make sure you water it. So here I have an analog rain meter. Um, this is one of the second things that you're going to want to use um, to help to keep, uh, keep up with how much water is in your garden. Um, this isn't going to be exactly true right now. I haven't gotten out here to empty this lately. Um, but it says about four and a half inches. You want to get even with it to, uh, to actually see how much rain you've had. Um, that being said, uh, an inch of rain is different things at different times and the reason being is is that um, an inch of rain falling in 15 minutes isn't the same as an inch of rain falling over several days. Um, those amounts of water are very different amounts of water. Um, but that being said, um, an inch of rain is roughly 0.623 gallons of water um, per square foot. So um, if you want to calculate the square feet in your garden and then to figure out how to add an inch or two of rain, that's going to be 0.623 and then for one inch. And then if you want two inches, that's going to be more like a, a 1.2 and then a little bit more. So um, I'm going to show you one of the next things that we're going to use um, to help to keep track of the water in the garden. And before I do that, I wanted to share with you how much water um, that is in the metric system. And that's going to be 25.37 liters per meter squared. I'm sorry I don't have smaller measurements than that, but you can take that and convert it yourself. So the next thing that you're going to want to have is some kind of a water meter for your hose so that you can see how many gallons or liters is coming out of it. I'm having trouble getting this one <laughs> switched back over to gallons that's in liters. And um, so the 0.623 gallons. Um, I have uh, converted to um, roughly 2.4 liters. It's more like 2.35 or 2.36 liters. Um, but this only has one decimal point, so we're going to be doing 2.4. We're going to round that off. It's going to be a little bit more than what I need. Um, for right now, I'm coming over here and I'm watering these watermelons. Um, please forgive my grass. I'm letting it go to seed right now. And um, so this is about a square foot area. Um, I went ahead and calculated out that area using the uh, pi times radius squared and um, figured all that out so you don't have to be as precise as all this but basically the idea is, is to calculate out the area that you need and then for an inch of rain you want about 0.623 gallons you don't want to do all that all at one time and um, the reason being is that um, you know these plants they don't get all of that water all at once right so you may want to spread that out over a few days um, to make sure that it's got more consistent water um, but if you do want to do a deep watering, that's also not a bad thing because that deep watering um, helps to get water deep down in the soil and helps to encourage deep root growth and more resilient plants. Um, so that may be a good thing as well. So the last thing that you're going to want is one of these soil meters. Um, this thing's given us an idea of what the moisture is like in the soil. And the reason that you're going to want one of these as well is because overwatering is just as bad as underwatering. Remember that you can always add a little bit more water. Um, and two, depending on soil conditions and the day, there's all kinds of variables that will affect how much water is actually absorbed um, into the soil. Um, there are a lot of variables there. Um, so you're gonna want one of these um, because some of that water is gonna roll off. Um, if it's a little too dry, 
Um, that water is not going to soak in as well. It's going to have to break that soil, ten uh, soil tension and stuff on the surface at first um, before you're going to get good absorption into the soil. And um, so you can get one of these water meters to help keep up with the moisture. Um, right now I'm trying to keep this in the green and that's what's going on with it. So I'm happy there. As always, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe to help support the channel. Um, if you haven't checked it out yet, check out five watering mistakes that you can make in your garden. And um, again, thanks for watching.